In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen, he is truly risen. Christ Jesus lay in death's strong bands, for our offences given. But now at God's right hand he stands, and brings us life from heaven. Therefore let us joyful be, and praise the Father thankfully, with songs of Alleluia, Alleluia. How long and bitter was the strife, when life and death contended. The victory remained with life, the reign of death was ended. Stripped of power, no more it reigns, an empty form alone remains. Death sting is lost for ever. Alleluia. So let us keep this festival to which our Lord invites us. The Saviour, who is joy of all, the sun that warms and lights us. By his grace he shall impart eternal sunshine to the heart. The night of sin has ended. Alleluia. This is the Via Lucis, the Paschal Way of the Light, the Station to the Resurrection, by Fra Father Francis Martin, from the April 2019 Magnificat, published by Magnificat, uh, Yonkers, New York, Volume 21, Number 2, beginning with page three, 234, page 234. The Paschal Way of Light, or Via Lucis, is a new religious practice proper to the Easter liturgical period. The characteristics of the new devotion resemble the Way of the Cross, or Via Crucis, and can be prayed individually or with others. An icon of the resurrection is raised for all to see. Sunday is the day for the Via Lucis especially. The Via Lucis includes 14 stations for reflection on Christ's Pasch, its Passover, from his resurrection to Pentecost. The first station, Jesus rises from the dead. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. 1 Peter 1, 8-9 Meditation How wonderful he is! We have never seen him, and yet somehow we do see him and know that he is risen from the dead. He is hidden from our gaze, and yet we can see his face and witness to his love. In fact, as St. John Paul II reminded us, our witness would be hopelessly inadequate if we ourselves had not first contemplated his face. As we let the reality of the resurrection enter us, we understand that the last word about us is not death, but life. His life, which he shares with us now and forever. Page 235. Jesus you are hidden from our gaze, and yet we can see your face and contemplate your beauty and rejoice with inexpressible joy because you are who you are. The second station. The disciples find the empty tomb. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, bent down, and saw the burial cloths alone. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. Luke twenty four twelve. Meditation. Suppose Peter had stayed to think and pray, to seek from God the meaning of this mystery of absence. Suppose he had not just 
acted on his first impression and left the scene of the greatest creative act of God the world will ever know. And what about us? How often do we leave a confusing event? Sometimes something that seems to speak to us only of absence? What would happen if we were to stay and open our hearts to God and wait for him in trust? We would hear his beatitude. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. Luke 1, 45. Jesus, I am waiting for you in an absence that is already full, as when I wait for a friend, even though he is late in coming. I believe what you have said to me. The third station. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. John twenty sixteen. Page 236. They spoke, and her heart ached with longing. Then he spoke her name, and she knew him. Our job in prayer is to wait and long for him in trust. When he has secretly worked in our hearts and has made us ready, he takes the initiative. Somehow, he calls our name, and we know even as we are known. The watchmen came upon me as they made their rounds of the city. Have you seen him whom my heart loves? I had hardly left them when I found him whom my heart loves. I took hold of him and would not let him go. The Song of Songs 3, 3 through 4. Let this be the story of our lives. Seek the Lord and he will make himself known. Then let our heart hold him fast. Jesus, give to us as you gave to Mary the gift of an affection for you, and a love that willingly embraces your will. The fourth station. Jesus walks with the disciples to Emmaus. Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? Luke 24, 32. Meditation. An ancient rabbi would string pearls, that is, pierce a sacred text, and link it to another until he returned to the source of revelation, the fire of Sinai. Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures, Luke 24, 27. Jesus fed them with the bread of the word. He brought them to the place of revelation, and they discovered that the fire of revelation is Jesus himself. Jesus will do the same for us if we take the time to go to the scriptures. Perhaps we will be discouraged at first, and then the risen Christ will open our minds to understand. Lord, be patient with us. We are dull and slow to believe. We need your instruction so that our hearts will burn with love as we come to know you. The fifth station. Jesus reveals himself in the breaking of the bread. While he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Luke 24, 30-31, Meditation, page 237. See the rhythm. He took, he blessed, he broke, he gave. This is the same fourfold gesture we see at the Last Supper and at the multiplication of the loaves. He took of this creation. He blessed it by union with himself, and then his body was broken, and he gives himself for us. When we really understand your word, you open the scriptures for us. Then we are ready to sit at table and enter into the mystery of your taking, blessing, <coughs> breaking and giving. Blessed be your broken body, which is really your once broken and now glorious body. If we enter into this rhythm with our own bodies, we will recognize you. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. <coughs> Page 238. 
the sixth station, Jesus appears to the disciples. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. John twenty nineteen, Meditation The Lord greets us with peace. Shalom is not merely the absence of hostility and fear that it generates. It is the presence of in a relationship of all that ought to be there. The Prince of Peace stands there with his glorious wounds and tells us that all that ought to be in the relation between the Father and ourselves is now present. We can open the doors. We can accept the gift of peace and greet others in peace. We can enter through the closed doors of fear and enmity, asking and giving forgiveness. And here it's said of us, how lovely are the feet of the one who brings the good news, announcing peace and reconciliation. Isaiah 52, 7. Do not be afraid to risk and bring this peace. <coughs> Lord, how we long to hear your voice proclaiming peace telling us that our sins are forgiven and enable us to forgive and receive forgiveness. Then all that ought to be in our relations will be genuinely present. Please hear our prayer. The seventh station. Jesus confers on his disciples the power to forgive sins. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. John twenty twenty one through 23 As the Father breathes into Adam the breath of life, so Jesus breathes into his bride, the Church, the very life breath of God himself. In all of the Old Testament, the word forgive expressed something only God can do. And now the disciples are given this divine authority. They set free and hold. They declare who can join the community in its fullness of worship. They declare forgiveness and God affects it. What a power is given to priests and bishops, weak men who themselves need forgiveness. In another way, all of us, in the power of the Holy Spirit, can lift burdens from others by declaring our forgiveness of any wrongs they have done against us. Pray right now and then bind anyone whom you have hold, held bound. We praise you, Jesus, risen Lord, for having endowed your church with the jewels of understanding, of praise, and most especially, of forgiveness. Page 239. The eighth station, Jesus confirms Thomas in faith. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. John 20, 27 to 28. Page 240. Meditation. We want proof. We want to sit and judge and declare what is to be accepted and what is to be rejected. And then comes love, a whole new logic that unseats us from our control and we are uneasy. The other disciples told Thomas and the Holy Spirit was confirming their message within his heart, but he had to touch and see and be in control. Jesus came and once again declared peace. And then the logic of love. Put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side. Jesus won him over by love and humility. And Thomas happily yielded his grip on his life and proclaimed him, my Lord and my God. Can Jesus win you over? There is no proof. 
What could prove that this man with his wounds, now returned from the dead, was Lord and God? Can you yield to Jesus' logic of love? Lord, I see without seeing, and I know without knowing. I proclaim you my Lord and my God. Let me know your promise. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. John 14, 21. The ninth station. Jesus appears to his disciples on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. John 21, 12, Meditation. How did they know? He was not so familiar that thought of asking him who he was did not occur to them. Yet somehow they knew and dared not ask. Faith is a knowing beyond knowing. We know that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yet this knowledge is also not knowledge. We are so used to dominating what we know and of putting it to use that knowledge which is beyond us makes us uneasy. Faith knowledge is like perfume. We know that it is present, but we cannot control this presence. We can only receive it. If you turn to the Lord right now, you will know that he is present to you, yet you will not know it because he is beyond knowing. Take a moment and gaze on his face. As you let him purify you, you will see the glory of God shining there. O oh Lord, in your light we see the light. Let this mystery draw us further and further into your light, until we know your love which is beyond knowing. Ephesians three nineteen. The tenth station. Jesus confers primacy on Peter. Page 241. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, a son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, Feed my lambs. John 21, 15. Meditation. Page 241. Why didn't Jesus ask him, Are you sorry you betrayed me? Why ask, Do you love me? Perhaps because love covers a multitude of sins. Or perhaps because caring for others requires love more than anything else. Let us ask ourselves, am I a dutiful parent who gets by on willpower? Or do I love Jesus and love my family and thus build them up and receive from them? Do I know how to look at Jesus, to be overwhelmed by his mercy, and then turn, turn around, and imitate that mercy. Pity may look to the need, but mercy looks to the person. This is probably why Jesus asked Peter, as he did, if Peter experiences mercy, he will know how to care for his brothers and sisters. Lord, let me know your mercy. Let it change my heart and take me out beyond calculation and measure to the place where I know the secret of your own understanding of reality. Page 242. The 11th station. Jesus entrusts his disciples with a universal mission. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. Matthew 28, 18-20 Meditation Did you ever stop to think why it might be that there are so many different religions and so many conflicts in the world, despite the fact 
that the church has a mission to all the nations. It might be that we simply are not holy enough, not enlightened or delicate enough to enter into the hearts and minds of our brothers and sisters and appreciate the truth that is there, to rejoice in it and see it in the light of Jesus, the eternal word of God, the very source of all that is. We are unable to carry out the mission that the Lord wants of us and cherish these rays of truth in such a way that they are preserved and enhanced within the bosom of a church radiant with love and graciousness. Pray that we become deep enough to cherish and carry to completion the truth that God wants to entrust to us. Prayer. Lord, have mercy on your church and purify us. Gift us with enthusiasm and respect so that we can carry out your commission to bring all without coercion or triumphalism into the life you have for them. Page 243. The twelfth station, Jesus ascends into heaven. Therefore, brothers, since through the blood of Jesus we have confidence of entrance into the sanctuary by the new and living way he opened for us, through the veil, that is his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a sincere heart and an absolute trust. Hebrews 10, 19 to 22. Meditation. While St. Luke in the book of Acts recounts the ascension of Jesus, the fact of the physical presence of Jesus with the Father is spoken about in many places of the New Testament. We have access to the Father and can enter the sanctuary <coughs> because of the blood of Christ and through the flesh of Christ, that is, through his glorious and radiant humanity in which he is the great priest <coughs> over the house of God. We know that Jesus has ascended because we can experience our access to the Father. It is through the mediation of our priest who intercedes for us by changing us and making us apt to enter the Father's presence. This is ultimately the mystery of the Eucharist, where the blood, the flesh, and the priesthood of Christ bring us to intimacy with the Father. Page 244. Jesus, glorious priest and brother, we honor you and worship you. We rejoice in your presence with the Father and your place on his throne. Bring us into that presence forever. The 13th station. Mary and the disciples await the coming of the Holy Spirit. All these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer, together with some women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. Acts 1, 14. The story of every renewal of the church and the spirit contains the rhythm. Unity, intercession, the coming of the Holy Spirit. Mary knew this rhythm in her own life when, after years of service in her home and intercession, the Holy Spirit came upon her and the power of the Most High overshadowed her. Now, with the disciples, some of the women and her relatives, Mary is praying and interceding again. And just as at the Incarnation, when she conceived the word in her heart before she conceived him in her womb. So here she is filled with the Holy Spirit as a prelude to his coming upon the church. Holy Spirit, bring us into unity in prayer as the first act in your gracious plan to renew us and make us worthy to praise you, to gaze on the face of Jesus, the Son of the Father, and to be instruments of peace in this world because of your powerful presence. The 14th station, Jesus sends the Spirit promised by the Father to his disciples. Exalted at the right hand of God, Jesus received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured it forth as you both see and hear. Acts 2, 33, page 245. Meditation. John tells us that there was, of course, no Spirit yet because Jesus had not yet been glorified. John 7.39, there is some deep, mysterious connection 
as Peter also teaches us, between the passion and resurrection of Jesus and his exaltation at the right hand of the Father and the coming of the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Spirit, which we experience, could only take place when the same Spirit had transformed the humanity of Christ and made him the instrument by which mankind could receive the new life that comes from the Father. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Eucharistic Prayer 4. If, then, we wish to know the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we should obey Jesus, who, along with the Father, is the source of the Spirit of life. Jesus, help us yield to the action of the Holy Spirit, who wishes only to conform us to your image and make of us a church you can be proud of and rely upon. We want to accept this responsibility. Page 245. Father Francis Martin, who died in 2017, was a renowned scripture scholar and founder of the Word Proclaimed Institute. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Jesus lives, thy terrors now, can no longer death upon us. Jesus lives by this we know. Thou, O grave, canst not enthrall us. Alleluia! Jesus lives, henceforth is death, but the gate of life immortal. This shall calm our trembling breath when we pass its gloomy portal. Alleluia! Jesus lives, for us he died, then alone to Jesus living, pure in heart may we abide, glory to our Saviour giving, Alleluia! Jesus lives, our hearts know well, not from us his love shall sever, life nor death nor powers of hell, tear us from his keeping ever, Alleluia! Jesus lives, to him the throne, over all the world is given. May we go where he has gone, rest and reign with him in heaven. Alleluia! In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.